Well, hello there, my little mathematicians. Um, I am going to help you get started on your homework, which is in your textbook, page 434, numbers one through six all. Now notice I'm not gonna do them, I'm just gonna um, do some suggestions and get you started on it. Okay, so um, you're gonna do number one on your own, but number two, let me go ahead and give you some suggestions for it. The first thing, as you read it, since there's so much information, write down the info as you read. Okay, so it says one clay brick weighs 5.76 pounds. Okay, there's one piece of information. The brick is eight inches long. So the length is eight inches. Um, the width, is two and a fourth, which if you take in your calculator one divided by four, you get 0.25. So two and a fourth becomes 2.25 inches wide. Um, the height, I'm just gonna write that right now, but it doesn't say anything yet. If the clay weighs 0 0.08 pounds per cubic inch, okay, so that's more up here, 0 0.08 pounds per cubic inch, that's the same thing as, oops, why did I put feet out of habit? Um, per cubic inch. So inches cubed is the same thing as cubic inches. What is the volume of the brick? And find the height of the brick. Okay, so we don't know the height and they also want us to find the volume. Hmm. I mean, normally they tell me at least one of these. So this piece of information must help me find one of the missing pieces. Well, it tells me um, that it's 0 0.08 pounds per cubic inch. Um, so that's probably something that I can use as a conversion factor. And they tell me that this is the total amount that it weighs. So I always start with the thing um, that gives you one singular unit. So this is one singular unit of just pounds. And then this is the one I use as the conversion one because it has two different units, pounds and cubic inches. So I'm gonna start with 5.76 pounds. Okay, that goes here. And then I'm gonna want pounds to cancel. And what goes with pounds? It's pounds per cubic inch. Okay, so they said 0 0.08 goes with the pounds and then per one cubic inch. Now you just do this times this, which times one is the same thing, 5.76, divided by that number on the bottom, 0 0.08. So 5.76 divided by 0 0.08, you get 72, and my unit that's left is cubic inches or inches cubed. So 72 cubic inches is the unit that I ended up ending with hey, cubic inches, that's the volume. So that's the volume of it. Okay, step one, I just got the volume. Yay. Now you know how to find the height because remember volume of a rectangular um, prism, which that's what a brick is, is length times width times height. So you know the volume, it's 72. You know the length, they told you was eight. The width was 2.25 and the height we don't know. So now you're gonna multiply these two, get your answer, and it'll be that something h, and then you divide by that number, divide the same thing on the other side, and that will tell you um, how many inches it is, okay? So I got you started on the hard part for number two. You guys go ahead and finish that. And then I'm also gonna help you get started on problem six. Okay, so let's take a look at problem six. And again, as you read it, I strongly suggest that you write down the information as you read it. Okay, it says about 7.5 gallons of water fill up one cubic foot of space. So 7.5 gallons per cubic foot. How many gallons of water will fill a goldfish pool shaped like the prism shown. So um, how many gallons of water? Well, let's figure that out. Um, they told me from the drawing, okay, we don't know the volume, we need to figure that out, but they showed me, if you look at your picture on page 
um, 435, problem six. Here's your drawing. Your length is three, your width is three and a half, and your height is one and a half. So let's go ahead and label that. You have a length of three, a width of three and a half or 3.5, and a height of 1.5. Okay, so I can find the volume if I go length times width times height. So three times 3.5 times the height of 1.5. Go ahead and type that into your calculator. You get a volume of 15.75 cubic feet. Now are some of you guys seeing how you're gonna get that answer? of um, how many gallons. So I want my answer to end in gallons to answer the question. Well, I start with my singular unit of cubic feet because that will help me use my conversion unit right here. Okay, so I start with 15.75 cubic feet. I'm gonna use this conversion one where you have feet cubed. Remember, you always want the like things across from each other so they cancel, and then gallons. Okay, so 7.5 went with the gallons, and then it was per one cubic foot. So one for the cubic feet. Now I know in the past, like we did 5.76 divided by 0 0.08. This time we're gonna do this times this. This is why it's helpful to not just guess like, oh, I always divide them, or oh, I always multiply them. Well, it changes, right? Depending upon the type of problem. And some people can just look at it and it's very clear to them. They're like, well, no, of course you multiply this instance. And then the last one, like, duh, you divide. Okay, well, if you're like me, it's not a, well, duh, type moment. This is really helpful. And this helps me figure out if I should multiply or divide. Okay, you always start with the one that has one singular unit and then you use your conversion one, I like to say. That's the one that has two units with the numbers and you always put the like terms across from each other, the like units, I should say, so that they'll cancel, and then you're usually left with the units that you were asked to solve for, okay? Now, if you don't need to do this because you're just one of those brilliant smarty pants that just can be like, duh, you multiply, or duh, you divide, great, okay? Perfect, then you don't need to do this step. You can just jump straight to there, do the math. But for those of you like me, where it's a struggle to figure out what you do, this is really helpful, okay? So now you notice the feet, cubic feet canceled and all I'm left with is the units of gallons. And since these are on the same line, I'm going to multiply these two numbers, 15.75 times 7.5. And then that will be my answer. That's how many gallons um, can fill it. All right, so I got you started on two and six. Notice I didn't finish them. You need to finish them, but hopefully that was enough to kind of get you going and then I think those were the hardest of the page 434, one through six. So then you guys can hopefully use that to help you finish the rest. All right, you're gonna do great. Miss you guys.